Yeah. All right. Happy. What is today? Is today Tuesday? Uh, that's Tuesday. Yeah. That's how off I am. I really can't remember. I'm telling you, man. That uh, that intro music kind of reminds me of like a, an N64 wrestling game. You know. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. The ramp. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we didn't really. We wanted. <laughs> we wanted to talk something Walking Dead, and I'm sure there is something out there. But right now, we just don't know what that is. No, I can't think of anything. But we don't want to. You know, we 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 were enjoying having four or five podcasts a week. So today, you get a completely random podcast that has no rhyme or reason or direction, probably won't get but like 20 views, but nonetheless, we want to put something out. We're just going to spitball, you know, just shoot the breeze, why not? And 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 not literally spitball, so please put your straw up, JP. Like, we've uh, been through this. It's not sanitary, nor is it allowed in the station. It's actually my catheter tube. So, oh, you, you know. still got that? Mm-hmm. I but thought that was supposed uh, right to be gone like six months ago. Right now, it's just for pleasure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And speaking of pleasure, you uh, have got a bit of a stand-up gig tomorrow. A, a little bit. I, I'm not doing like a, uh, a full set, but I am emceeing my uh, my buddy Matt Crowder. If you don't know him, find him on Facebook. He's a, a singer-songwriter, kind of a little... Little folk, really country talented kind of. guy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He does, he does like folk, country sort of like great story songs. And yeah, I'm gonna be emceeing. Is he usually uh, plays with this uh, this chick, but she's not with him for a little while. So I'm gonna ride shotgun and MC and you know put some jokes out there. And what kind of jokes do you do? You, do you have anything that you could test on us? Well, I think my opener, and this is like a, an actual bit I've been working on about you know like. Kind of looking at your cup as half full instead of half empty, but I mean, it come out and it's uh, it's about an hour or so down the road, a little area we call the Triad, and I am just gonna be like, oh, hey now, it's great to be back in the Triad. I always have a blast when I'm around here. I mean, uh, now that I think about it, the last time I was actually in the Triad, I was at the uh, the hospital watching my great aunt Ruby die, but uh. You know, look, look. I'm not. I'm not going to bring down the mood. Glass, glass half full. Aunt Ruby's gone, and uh, once my granny Nana and my mom are both dead, that'll be the uh, only three people in this world who have watched me masturbate, who have walked in on me masturbating, and they'll all be gone. So that's one less cross I'll have to bear. You know, I won't have to live with that shame whenever. Uh, you know. Yeah, you see where I'm going with that. Uh-huh. True story, Masturbation. By the way. A true story no, with no. all three of them? Well, no, no, no. Aunt Ruby, did, did she ever walk in on. I don't think so. I don't think so. Poor Aunt Ruby. I know. She totally, you know, missed missed out on that. That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should that's say. Not, that's never happened to you? Come on. Let's have it all of us. I know. Actually, in Neither my life. Your parents, nope. not nope. like a sibling. Nope. Because you had a fuller house than me, man. Nobody, uh, Walked in on you, greasing the weasel. Nope. No, no. Oh, I was man. just. I guess I was just discreet enough, and just. I don't know. No, never it had is that happen. The worst feeling, man. It's. Uh, oh my god. I mean, don't you it's at least awful. like do it under a blanket or something, or you just like spread eagle on the bed, laptop just going. I mean, well, paint us a picture, but well, not. Well, keep in mind, back then I didn't have a laptop. You know, this is like this is pre u porn. This is like me watching King of Queens and like memorizing that one really great uh, cleavage peak on Leah Remini. Storing this, that you, in did my y'all didn't, bake. y'all didn't get a Sears catalog. Yeah, we did, man. But I'm not. I'm not for print. Like I said, I, I'd rather. What, what do you call it? Like blue. I, I don't know what you do, but. Like basically, my mind's a hollow deck, and I would I'd store up these chicks, and maybe it'd be like a a double action thing with like Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld, and you know the chick from King of Queens, and you know I'm immersing myself with the two of them, or maybe maybe I'm imagining myself as one of them, and it's I, I don't I don't know the possibilities were endless, but uh, yeah, man, it's 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 not fun. It ain't fun. It wasn't or, fun. You didn't enjoy no, it. No, no, the fan the fantasy was fun, and the ejaculation was phenomenal. Especially at that age, Lord have mercy. But you no, know, getting uh, getting caught is. I should have put a warning awesome. on this one. <laughs> we just you know, just we when you're talking with yet. JP, you don't really ever know when masturbation is going to come up. So I apologize for those that may have children yeah, in the it, room. It or... comes up for me about twice a day. Okay, about twice. Yeah, look, I mean, you need. In my estimation, in my experience, you need a reason to get out of bed, and you need a a, a good way to fall asleep, and you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. 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 Well, luckily for you, you grew up, you got a girlfriend, and that wasn't a problem anymore. <clears throat> uh, yeah, of course. I definitely don't do that anymore. No way. 
definitely not a you know not before worry nothing no no so with this random rambling um uh-huh we just decided we would kind of talk to you a bit if you found us randomly on the internet well we are the podcasting dead we typically talk about the walking dead though we obviously like to talk about other things and we're kind of branching out and we did want to start doing like a once a week just kind of free for all we just kind of talked about any and everything if you don't like it you know if you didn't like it you could click away and if you just wanted to sit in and listen to the random things we talk about yeah you're you're welcome to but um let's look back on 2018 the year's over with let's look back and think all right what were some of your favorite things from 2018 Oh, man. What good happened in 2018? I can't even remember. I mean, lots of good things happened in 2018. Uh, You and your girlfriend got together? I can only think of the bad. Like, Daredevil got canceled. That was a really bad thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The Punisher Season 2 is ready to rock, only to be canceled afterwards. To be canceled, yeah. But you know uh, the the dude that plays Kingpin, he's he's getting behind this whole you know save Daredevil. I've position. seen that. Yeah, he's gotten a lot of signatures. So I don't know, man. They need to work something out. I mean, this isn't like uh, like Fox controlling the the Fantastic Four and the X Men just shitting all over them. You know, this is a quality network producing quality content. Let's figure out a way to make it work for everyone. Yeah, man. especially when it's in such high demand. Absolutely, man. Just ridiculous. But yeah, so um, looking back on 2018, I can't believe you really have to think that hard about good things that happened. I mean, uh, The Walking Dead Season 9 started. Yeah, The Walking Dead's back on track. And it was really good. Had to say goodbye to Rick. Had to say goodbye to Rick. That's a bad. We're talking about the good things. Yeah, okay, okay. I keep... keep, uh, We'll get to the bad things next. All right, all right. So give us some more good stuff. What good happened in your life in 2018? Um, Hmm... Hmm. Other than apparently getting walked in on, but had no, that's been years ago. Okay, that, that, that I was gonna say you live alone, so it just people just like walk up into your house. Uh, the last time that happened, man, I, I, I was probably only like twenty six, twenty seven, something like that. But you lived on your own at no, that maybe age. It was twenty five. Well, I mean, I, look, I've done a lot of couch surfing over the uh, through my twenties. Uh, someone gives surfing. you a couch to sleep on, and you do that. Look, I, I don't leave a mess. I, they give you a couch to sleep on, and, 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 and your way of thanking them is to to do that. Do you have a better way to fall asleep? All right, yeah, I can just lot. close my I never have a problem falling asleep. There was a lot going on in my life. I can't think of a better stress relief, <laughs> and uh, it, it releases endorphins. I mean, is it... If I were to, like, uh, sneeze sitting on their couch, would that be any worse? I don't think so. Y'all see what happens when I turn JP loose right. We say we're going to have a free-for-all podcast, and, of course, we're talking about masturbation. Well, I mean, we started talking about, well, look. We got away from masturbation, and now we're back to masturbation. I mean, my my stand-up is largely about my life experience and my perspective, as stand-up should be. And look, that uh, has a lot to do with my life experience. And uh, Did it make you who you are? Largely, sure. Sure it did. I mean, just uh, and not not the act itself, not the uh, depravity, but just the fact that I'm, you know, I'm a guy who's always lived in his head. And, you know, there's a lot going on in there. And some of it you might want to see. Some of it you might not. I feel you. I live in my head, too. But, you know, and I'm really trying to sharpen up in like, like 2019, man. I really wanted to start doing open mics for stand up like twice a week. I really want to like tighten it up. I've been talking about it less. And now with, you know, my job situation changing, I have more. More yeah, you've been talking do about doing stand up now for gosh, two at least two years. So yeah. with the and job I mean, situation I've, I've, changing, maybe now it'll actually open up. Yeah, and I mean I've gotten it in like here, there, and yonder, but it's just open mics happen on weeknights, and you know busy work schedule. It's hard to get it in, especially when you got to drive, you know, at least an hour just to get to one. But right. that might be changing our little hometown. We uh. We might be getting a casino before too long. Yeah, they really... say that's kind of the the, the local politics here. Mm-hmm. So half the people are freaking out. Half the people are in support. So. I think it'd be great, man. I think it, it definitely opened up a lot more nightlife. I mean, us as radio guys, a lot more uh, new businesses, more advertising oh, yeah. coming in. I mean, yeah, I'm for it, man. Create, create. What do they say? Like seven thousand jobs or that's something? What they're saying. In the area. I mean, it could so, really yeah. turn us into a boom town. Next thing you know, you got titty clubs. You know, <laughs> you and I could cope, man. We could be like Sill in a Tony. Soprano, man, uh, yeah. own a, a strip bar together. How much does it cost endless. to start that up? 
Uh, we'll figure. I mean, we can just do it out of your basement to start out with. Okay, so we're gonna do a strip joint in my basement. Mm-hmm, why not? Now, I, I'm I'm not against this. My main question is, how are we gonna stop my girlfriend from knowing that's happening downstairs? Oh, geez, is uh, she got a prescription for Ambien? Can we like slip her some Ambien or something? Well, she's pregnant right now, so I don't want to slip her anything. Ah, yeah, that probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't be the best idea. But once she's not pregnant, we'll you drug know. the shit out of her. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> After uh, after five o'clock, after five thirty, she'll watch Andy Griffith, drug her. She'll be out, for, you know, good good twelve hours. And yeah, how do you know that she watches Andy Griffith? Why wouldn't she watch Andy Griffith? She doesn't. I mean, nothing like lulls you down like a a, a nice opiate cocktail, some Andy Griffith. I do love some Andy Griffith though. Yeah, me too. That used to be the thing, man. Five thirty, you got Andy Griffith. Six o'clock, local news. Six thirty, uh, national news. Then you got reruns of Seinfeld, followed by reruns of Frasier. Then eight o'clock, whatever new was coming on TV, man. Was this what is this Channel Seven? Yeah, you know, I was actually because yeah, I'm much like you. I mean, you know, I stream more than anything now, and all I have like cable wise is the basic thirteen channels, and I actually just tuned in, man, and watched some like. Some broadcast television. I, I don't know. It was like going back in time. It was great. Right. It was refreshing. Like when you got home from school. Yeah, exactly. It was it was fun. You know, watched the uh, the new episode, my first episode of the Orville. I don't know how that flew under my radar, but yeah, like it's uh, like I think we talked about that on another podcast. Yeah, my dad, yeah, my dad great, loves that show. show. He's a, he was a Star Trek fan. Yeah, I love and, Star and Trek. He, I, I think it's just you know I, I I guess you have to stream Hulu to watch the Orville. I don't have Hulu, so I never checked it out. But I started on Vikings. Yeah, I've heard that's really good. I'm too. about four or five episodes mm-hmm. in. It's good, but uh, if you if, looking back on 2018, one thing that I really liked was that I even though it was kind of at the end of 2018, uh, I caught on to the Kingdom, the Last Kingdom. And that's a show, that's a right? good Netflix okay. show. Yep, yep. It is. It is good, man. It's and it, what's cool is that and Vikings share some characters. Now it's not a shared universe, and uh, it's okay. not. It's just basically both shows use historical characters like right? Ragnar, and um, they call him Uhtred in uh, the Last Kingdom. But I hear that in Vikings he'd be the character known as Rollo. Hmm. So I, I don't know about, it. but I mean, and then they've got King Alfred. So they do have some shared characters. Um, one good thing we did not get out of 2018 was some Game of Thrones. Yeah, 2018 absence for a Game of Thrones. And being this is a free for all podcast, I'm not worried about structure. Uh-huh. Take that mic and pull it down because the boom is like right in front of your like the, it's it's covering up the majority like of your this. face. Take the the bin there up top, up top. No, oh, no, oh, no, no, oh. no, 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 no. Grab the bend, the part that bends up okay. top. Yep, okay, and now it. pull it down. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, now the wire's getting taut. Is it? Yeah. Uh, take it and pull the mic. Pull the st- that way. Okay. Like, take the stand that way. Okay. No, you stay your body oh, there. I'll stay here. And now I turn the mic. Side. Yep. Like that? That's a little better. Yeah, now I can kind of okay. see you. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. There Let we me go. see if I can move. It's just weird talking to a mic boom. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hear a voice coming. There we go. Now I see you. Okay. That's a before all. Like a smiley face on the little stand there. Yeah, but, you know. But yeah, uh, Last Kingdom was really good. Um, how can we forget the best movie of 2018, Avengers: Infinity War? Yeah, yeah, I'll go, I'll go with that. I'm trying to think. Was there anything else that came out that I would have thought was better? Man, there or were that a lot you of would have thought was better. I remember seeing, but get, what were they? Jesus. Oh man, when did no the Han Solo came out this year? The Last yes. Jedi came out what last year? I don't know if that was 18. Was that in 18? Tail end of 17. I can't remember. Um, but, uh, but we got Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, loved that. Um, we got and what came out? Did Black Panther come out right before? Was that in 2018? I think that was 2018. That was a good one too. I know Thor Ragnarok was the end of 2017. Yeah, but um, what else good did we get in 2018? I'm actually uh, typing in movies 2018 because I know there was a lot of movies I went and really uh, Overlord. That was an awesome movie. I haven't seen that yet. I oh, really want to see it. You got to go see it. That was that was that was probably like my that that's like the dark horse for my favorite movie of 2018. I mean, yeah, Avengers: Infinity War. That's ten years of storytelling and culminating. So yeah, that was like that was awesome. But just. Uh, uh, Overlord, man, just such a like sleeper hit, you know? right? And like I had no idea what it was about going in, which made it that much better. 
Oh, so you didn't have a clue. No, no. You didn't know it was a horror movie or what? Ooh, and apparently a Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse dropped in 2018, and that was, uh, as I said, man, that was great. Yeah, well, that dropped just a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. That was like the tail end of 2018. Mm-hmm. Deadpool 2. Right. Oh, yeah, Deadpool 2. Yeah, Deadpool man, 2. that was awesome. That was incredible. Could possibly the uh, the last solo Deadpool movie, sadly. Yeah, uh, sadly. Taking that over. Let's see what else. A bunch of stuff I didn't see. Uh, yeah, Black Panther was 2018. Isle of Dogs, man. That was 2018. That you was said that was really good, right? Really heartwarming, man. Like like Wes Anderson. I don't know if you saw uh, the Fantastic Mr. Fox or... That, that was his other, like, uh, animatronic movie, you know, puppet movie. But I, I love Wes Anderson stuff, man. I mean, The Life Aquatic with Steve. That's Zizu. now that I've seen. Yeah, that's just great. He's a terrific filmmaker. But, yeah, man, The Isle of Dogs. You got Brian Cranston. Uh, just so many great voice actors. Uh, Bill Murray, of course. It's a Wes Anderson movie. Bill Murray. You said it had everything, right? It was funny, sad. Yet, it was just so heartwarming, man. It was great. Yeah, I want to see that. Very socially relevant, without being like pushy with any kind of like, Agenda. political message. Yeah. Yeah, I have to check that out. I Halloween, see. man, that was another really good one. I was surprised at how good that was. Uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did go see that. You saw a lot more movies this year than I did. Yeah, man. Before uh, Movie Pass really, like, you know, started start tightening up. I'm I mean, proud to say I called that in the beginning, though. I said that as soon as the Movie Pass thing came out, I was just like, I don't get how this is going to work for anybody. You know what I mean? Like, it's a cool idea right. and it's awesome, but I just don't see how anybody's going to, how this is going to be profitable enough as it is to sustain to, to, yeah. to and then they started you know adding you know charging more and adding extra bs and excluding certain theaters and certain movies and then but it just kind of fell apart one thing i can't say while i had it i uh, i spent less on the movie pass than i would have seen all the movies oh the without a see, doubt so I but it just they couldn't maintain that business model. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm yawning. That's rude. Oh, uh, Venom! Did you end up seeing Venom? I didn't, didn't but I'm going to see it this week. Yeah, I uh, I don't know, man. I just I kind of I know a lot of people loved it. I just kind of felt like it was more the same. I wasn't I wasn't crazy about it. It didn't blow your mind. No, nah, and plus, I mean, it's I know you kind of have to like remove yourself, but just the fact that it's Venom taking place outside of like a Spider-Man right. Like, you, like I was just especially like, for being like yeah. a comic reader, it's it's just I mean it's Venom. You know the backstory. Venom exists partly because, oh, it largely in part of because of Spider Man. So yeah, and without Spider Man, it's just a little. It's like yeah. it's like uh, Spider Man without Uncle Ben, right? And that, that's not why I didn't really good like it. I mean, I just didn't really like it because I didn't think it was all that great, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know Creed two, man. That slipped by me. I still want to see that. Did we get Rick and Morty season three in 2018? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think so. Probably. Yeah, I, w- I would. I think so. Actually, you know what? We didn't. Did we not? No, that was in 2000. That was out. If I remember correctly, season three was out the same summer as the last. I remember being at the beach. You should Google that while I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember being at the beach and I watched. I, I, I remember watching the new season of Rick and Morty and the beach house we were watching it in was 2017's beach house because I remember I also watched a, a very sad episode of, of Game of Thrones mm-hmm. and there was no Game of Thrones this year. I don't think we got Rick and Morty this year. I think that was. Yeah. Yeah. The last episode was October 1st, 2017. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 God, when you get old for any young listeners, when you get old, the years bleed together. They they really do. You get wrapped up in a routine. And, you're like uh, 15, 16 years old. You're like, how can you forget? That was a whole year ago. But once mm-hmm. you get a little bit older, man, it's just like Perception things time. you think you did this summer come to find out you did two or three summers ago. And you're like, what? Yeah. So, you know. Do you have you? There's some interesting theories on why time speeds up as you get older. Yeah, I mean, I've always you know heard that just like your perception of time, because when you're ten, you know, a year is like a tenth of. That's your what that's and that's what I think. Yeah, when you're two yeah. years old, a year is half your, half your life. life. When you're exactly. five, and you, you're told you got to wait a whole year, and you, you're like, holy Long crap! Time, then, you know, it's like one fifth of your life. But then once you you know turn twenty, thirty, I mean, a year is only a thirtieth of your life. Mm-hmm. So. That's some reason, you know, one, but one no, what's, uh, you got some more far out theories um, talking about like uh, like Mandela kind of stuff or like no, 
tampering, like like a simulation theory where people are tampering with our memories and our perception of time and the past, present, and future? Apparently. And for those, I'm so sorry to be yawning. That's very rude, I know. But, you know, there's some people out there. And for those of you that don't know, we are going, you know, we actually did our first, like, little unofficial first episode talking about uh, conspiracy stuff. Mm -hmm. And as soon as JP can get his ass in gear, we're going to have the official first episode. Um, But some people think the world ended in 2012. Have you read anything or heard anything on this? I have, uh, believe it or not, I have it's not a really, on this one. It's really kind of dumb, though. It's like basically, because it, my, my thing is, okay, if the world was supposed to end in 2012, as predicted by prophecy, and they went back and stopped whatever from whatever, like, w- would we have even thought that the world was going to end in 2000? You know what I mean? Like, because when you, that's the paradox. When you change time, what do you think happens if you were to go, if, if it was even possible to go back and manipulate time, do you think that it would erase our memories? Well, it depends or change on how our far memories? back they went. I mean, did they go all the way back to the ancient Mayans and, like, stopped whatever, like, they I were I feel like they would have to. Yeah. I mean, unless it was just, a, you know, I mean, I don't know what they could have stopped in the current time, you know? Right, like, how far back do you go? Like, where does the chain of events actually and, start? And, 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 yeah, and I mean, I don't I don't know. And that's the thing, my, like... Because you've known your whole life George Washington was president, but Mm -hmm. have you? I mean, if somebody went back in time and changed it five minutes ago, I mean, your entire memory would be altered. I'm telling you, man. Do you believe that's how time travel would work, or do you think that it's more more like it would create a separate timeline? And That's what I kind of wonder, but I don't know, man. I don't, like, like I ponder that a lot, too. Like, is it like Back to the Future 2, where you create a divergent timeline? Can you actually like go back and ch- can you change anything? You get like to the grandfather paradox, like by changing something in the past, would you even come back to the same to present? The same present, yeah. I love. I've spent a lot of. I love. I just. I've got books on time travel. I just. That not. You know. Not. I'm not one of these that even is sure that it's possible. I don't even know that I believe you could go back in time, but. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a really cool thought experiment, like as far as the paradoxes it creates and and just what could happen. Maybe you can't go back because there are so many paradoxes that going back could just destroy everything. There's some wild theories out there, man. Have you have you heard about the uh, the Donald Trump time travel theory? Yes. You've told me this. uh, His great uncle inherited all the the, basically the the estate, the notes, all that of Nikola Tesla. And this is all documented that uh, Donald Trump's uncle left him that in the 1980s. The the entire remaining works of Nikola Tesla and a 1980s Donald Trump had, you know, millions of dollars or whatever to develop the technology. And then you got those like 18th century books about Baron Trump and his little dog traveling in time. It's I mean, it's it's wild stuff, man. It's it's pretty wild. Mm. That, 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 once we start doing the, the 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 conspiracy cast, that'll be a great subject. Yeah, it really would. I, it's 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 wild. And then you think about, you know, like. Like, throughout the election and everything, his head's always seemingly in the noose. Like, you know, there's no way he's going to get out of this one, but somehow he does. And then you're like, did he maybe he had some knowledge of what was coming up? You know, like, circum... It's interesting. I, I'm telling you, the, the Truth Factory on YouTube, that they, they've done the best video I've seen so far on that. On time-traveling Trump. On time, time-traveling Trump. Great but does he time-travel or does his son time-travel? Uh, he's got a... He's both. They're, they're like a... a Doc and Marty from Back to the Future, apparently. So kind of like Rick and Morty. Kind of like Rick and Morty. Is Baron like Morty? Oh, geez, Donald. <laughs> I guess it would have to be. So do you think every time Donald Trump says something stupid, you know, Baron's like, oh, geez, Donald. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but that's so interesting. I mean, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all, but it's I mean, a it's very, very interesting theory. Yeah. And, and like I said, just that book, I mean, it's because it, it does talk about some stuff that you can, I know a lot of stuff from the past, Notre Dame or whatever. It's easy. It's so broad that it's easy to connect to this or connect to that. Right. But yeah, I mean, you could make some crazy predictions now. I'm so sorry for the Jones. Oh, um, but, you know, you could be like, I mean, even now, you could just be like, I predict a great bridge will collapse. And I mean, right. look how many bridges there are right. on Earth. A big bridge is bound to collapse at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, you can make predictions if they're if if they're broad enough. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I love stuff like that. Um, I, I'm still kind of astounded that some people think Trump went back in time. I mean, don't you think he would have went back in time and maybe. 
well, done something to make it. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I mean, some people even think that uh, Mike Pence is like from the future. It's, it's, it's wild, man. It's a deep rabbit hole. I laugh at this, but watch one day it's going to be all true. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's a deep rabbit hole to go down. Very, uh... I just, uh, I don't know, man. That's why I say I, I'm so excited for this conspiracy thing, because I love hearing of, of different conspiracies and such, but I just don't believe in many of them. We're, uh, we're going to dig deep. That much I can tell you. Super I mean, deep. there's a lot of, uh, you know, provable... Con- like, I, I want to do one all about false flags. I mean, the Gulf of Tonkin incident... They got us into a Vietnam like they used to, you know, for provocation to, you know, I mean, that's documented, you know, mm-hmm. what happened there. And I can't remember all the details, but like Oliver Stone's a documentary series, The Untold History of uh, the United States or whatever. Like, I mean, there was definitely some some fishy stuff going on as far as what happened and what we were told happened and the provocation they used to go into Vietnam. I mean, I watched a documentary on that recently the other day, because honestly, as far as what I was taught in school, man, we didn't spend much time on the Vietnam War. I mean, it was just kind of like, yeah, just gloss over it. Spent a lot of time on World War One, like the causes, what happened, World War Two. The Korean War is the one I know the least about. You know, I've got a documentary oh, on my list. War, yeah. yeah, and I got a documentary on my Netflix list to, that I plan to watch soon to try and learn more about that. But I'm an episode into the Vietnam one, and it's some pretty shisty stuff on there to say the least. On our part too. I mean, the United States government was playing mm-hmm. both sides. Right. I mean, they're like you That's know, what we tend to do. We usually do that. We're kind of like know? the evil devil on each one of their shoulders, like you know. Do this, and I mean, it is. It's 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 really interesting though to just look at the history of of the Vietnam War. It, re- it really is so much deeper than I thought it was. I mean, there's a lot yeah. to that whole situation. It, but it's it's one on Netflix. It's actually like a series. Actually, really good if you're on Netflix and you like documentaries or you love war documentaries. Check out the Vietnam one. You and know, I, you know, it is interesting. I mean, when you're going through high school, I mean, they really don't focus focus in very much on like 20th century history. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, you learn the the fundamentals from the founding fathers up through the Civil War. You know, you learn some Great Depression stuff, like you said, some World War stuff. But I mean, when it comes to Korean and v- Vietnam War, like they just kind of gloss over them, and it's like, and then we had an issue in Korea that was terrible. People died. Mm-hmm. That was called the Korean War. Then we, which actually the Vietnam War was no the Viet- the Korean War came first, yeah. then the Vietnam War. Yeah, but it's you know yeah we I, I don't know much about them because I wasn't taught much about them. Honestly, man, I think we should like like do it in reverse, like U.S. history. From present day and work our way back. That'd but we have wild, to understand eh? how we got here. Well, you know, we, we could uh, talk about the founding fathers a little bit. I, it'd, it'd be interesting. But then you're not going from here back. Then you're going from here to there, then back to here. And it gets, so you see, you see it, why no, they no, have no. to do it from the past up? Believe me, it would work. It would work. <laughs> I watched, uh, it, now this is not from 2018, but I watched that movie Witch last night. Hmm. It's a horror movie. It's actually on uh, on Netflix. Um I was told it was just one of the scariest movies ever, and while it was a good movie, it was not even kind of sort of scary. I'm, I'm still, I'm, 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 I'm getting, I don't know if I'm getting desensitized to scary movies because I mean horror is like my favorite genre. I mean, I pretty much every horror movie on Netflix that's in English I've watched, and half of the ones that are not in English I've watched. I just some nights I just don't feel like reading subtitles. You know what I mean? I've, I've seen some good ones that have subtitles, but there are nights where I'm just like, mm, I don't feel like reading subtitles. But I just, I didn't find it all that, um, I didn't find it all that scary, but it was an interesting mm-hmm. movie. Very slow paced. I mean, you gotta, you gotta focus. Have you finally seen Bird Box yet? No, I still haven't watched it. What the hell? I don't know. It's not very often I like really sink my teeth into sitting at, sitting at home and, and watching a movie. What the hell? That's why I go to the theater so much. That's really the only time I can really like focus in. And So you're more comfortable at a theater than you are at home? Well, of course. Of course. What does that say about your home or your neighborhood? You live in a rough neighborhood, man. You know, it's funny. The, the other day, like I, well, I didn't wake up. I was just watching TV. And I, I listen, I can hear off in the background, I'm like, do I have another TV going? As I hear a, I'll kill you, motherfucker. 
Oh wow, we're going full uncensored yeah. on the podcast today. Well, I mean, look, you know, I'm, it's a direct. Quote. You got to tell me if we're throwing f bombs in there. I got to give listeners warnings. I mean, you know how many times people have commented on our podcast, been like, "My kid laughed so hard when y'all said blah blah blah." Now that kid's going to be running around saying the f word, and it's all your fault. Look, honey, it's YouTube. This ain't PBS. You know, I ain't no uh, purple dinosaur. When you say honey, are you referring to me, or are you referring to I'm the lady, to who, a, lady people who have said that? I, 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 I'm talking. Talking to our listeners, yeah. So but, you're not uh, calling me, honey? No. I always felt no, a special a connection man. when you called. I'm a real man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are you are, you are a real man. Yeah, but no, like this, this altercation was just happening on the, the front porch, and, and he was like, oh, you're going to hold that knife? You, you can pull out a knife? I'll fucking kill you. I'll kill your motherfucking ass. And I was just like, man. Uh, we have never said the F word this many times in a single podcast. You're witnessing quote. history. It's a direct quote, but... uh. It's just, but in my neighborhood, man, like you don't call the cops. Like you hear gunshots, you, whatever, man, you don't like. I mean, mean like, wh- how, well, why don't you call the cops? That's so stupid, though. What are the people shooting going to know who called the cops? It's just something you don't, you never know what, what somebody might find out. I mean, I'm pretty sure if it. you just call the cops and you say, hey, I live on Blank Street and I just heard gunshots, I'm pretty sure that you're, you're, you're good. You do, you just got to let it, let what be is what be. That's you why know? the crime That's keeps it. happening because, all of y'all are too. I, I don't know the word. All y'all just all sit around. I, call the cops, man. Look, man, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood. We policed ourselves. All right. That you don't. You don't involve the police. You, you didn't grow don't. up in an Italian neighborhood. You grew up right here in this town. Well, I, there's I, nothing I, Italian about this town except for a couple of restaurants. I grew up watching The Sopranos. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah. There's a well. difference between growing up in an Italian neighborhood and watching The Sopranos. Well, every Sunday night, my living room was an Italian neighborhood, and you don't call Johnny Law. You just don't do it. You do. You handle things yourself. Now think about. That's, all right, why, let's, that's let's, why our communities are falling apart, man. They're, because people aren't calling the police. You no, know, because we live in a. a society with a bunch of sissy ass snitches who would you know don't want to come together as so you hear, all right let me paint other. a scenario for you there's okay. there's um there is there's in your neighborhood on a back road somebody gets shot yeah an innocent bystander gets shot they get mugged and they get shot you hear the gunshots but your dumb ass don't call the police and now that poor innocent person lays there and bleeds out because all of y'all were too stupid to call the police uh, look, you and your call uncle, the police. You and your uncle Joey and your cousins. You get together, and the person who shot whoever. Do you even have an uncle Joey? Uh, look, that's beside the point. And have you? All right, when you hear gunshots, have you went to investigate to ensure that everyone in the area is safe? Well, this is what I'm saying. That's because there's no uh, uh, there's no standard left. There's no manliness. I mean, uh, you people, there is. They're in the police department. <laughs> no, they all train man. really hard. We I, actually, you know what, despite the growing tensions between people and police, and we won't even get into that whole thing because that's a whole other rabbit hole to go down because, you know, there's, there's times where cops are definitely uh, assholes and then there's times where cops are really good people. But our cops around here, I, I dare say, because being in radio, we've met the majority of them. We have some decent police in this area as far as just they're good human beings. So... The next time you hear gunshots, I mean, I get not calling the cops because the guy next door is sitting on his porch smoking a doobie. Like, you don't ever call the cops on that. But when you hear gunshots, that's where it's it's time to call the police. Someone could be hurt and in need of assistance. Look, I come from a time and a place. You come where, from the uh, same time I do. You're one year younger uh, than say me. Say somebody gets fresh with your little sister, feels her up. You go beat her, beat the exactly. beat the ass. You, yeah. you know, you you hit their hands with the uh, with the wrench or something. You you break some. We fingers. just punch them. We just punch them in the face. But you know, no, that, the punishment that's... fits the crime. But uh, all I'm saying is, you know. I mean, hold on now. Are we talking about that's like a little pinch on the butt? I mean, you definitely let them know, hey, that's not cool, and you scare them. But I don't remember ever being like 12 and breaking other kids' hands with wrenches because they pinch my sister's butt. Well, I, I mean, it all just depends on the uh, the veracity of the crime. I think, I think you're painting – I think JP is – are you, are you like – are you <laughs> – 
Are you giving us like your imagined life that you got vicariously through watching? Um, what's that mafia show that you? Love? I come from a different time and place. That's you all don't. I'm you don't. You come when, from uh, the same walking, time that I do. You walk down the wrong street uh, with the wrong color shoes on. You're going to be going home barefoot, and that's it. I mean, on your street, I believe that, but I but, mean, uh, that's look, not the way this area is. I've I, got multiple colors of shoes, and they're all still in my house. If I called the police every time there was gunshots, they, I mean, they would just have to sit and park and wait, wait for the next one. I mean, maybe that's what they need to do. I don't want to live in some JP text me one night. State. Anyways, I'm moving on. We've been on this subject for way too long, but JP text me one night and was like, state. I just heard automatic gunfire. Then call the police. No. <laughs> like I said, you don't call the police. You know, if two guys, are fist, two people are fist fighting in the backyard. I mean, I believe me. I grew up in, an, in, in that type of situation, too, where you, I grew up around some rough folks. You don't just call the police for every little thing. Get that. Got it. But when you're in your neighborhood and you just hear random gunshots, it might be worth it just to report to the police. Like I said, if somebody wants to have a little settle an argument in the backyard with a little fist to fist action, you don't call the police. If somebody's sitting on their porch doing drugs or whatever, you don't call the police. That's their home. They do whatever they want in their home. But once it gets to the point where someone's life might be in danger, it might want to just you know call the police. Look, I come from a time and a you place. You don't die. Moving on. You come from the same the place and the same time that I do. Itself. You came from 30, which actually I came from Louisiana. But once I got to this area, which wasn't, you know, too, yeah, I was like five, six. I don't know how old I was. Once I got here, uh, you come from the same place that I do, <laughs> just like 30 minutes away and the exact same time. So you, but your family's still like native to this area, right? You were, you Most were, of my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so we got family like spread out all over the place. So you were like a fish out of water down there. More well, or you, less, yeah. yeah my you, dad was in the Army, but yeah, you know, we've so got you family. I've got family in D.C. i got family all over the place. All over the place. We're a bunch of whores. Woo. Or hoochie mamas. Nobody actually them. probably yeah, would they were pay whores, any of my family for sex. It, right. so, <laughs> a, little, a little bit on the slutty side. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I love my family, and only a few out, only man. a few of them are sluts. All right. But so moving on, a year in review as we wrap and get towards the end of this podcast. This is the only free for all podcast we've we've really done like this. It's kind of fun though. We always usually have a direction. This time we started off talking about movies and shows, and then we got on. Well, let me correct that. We started off talking about masturbation. I well, got I got us away from that. Uh-huh. You got us back to masturbation. Then I got us away from that again, and we started talking about movies and shows, and then we talked about neighborhoods, and we also have talked about uh, conspiracies. I mean, what else is there really to cover? Also. 2018, how could I forget my absolute favorite thing that happened in 2018? I liked it more than any movie, show, or anything that came out. The Red Sox won the World Series and beat the Dodgers to do so, which is my best friend's favorite team. So you can imagine he does not like that big celebratory 2018 World uh, Series championship autographed picture thing I have up on my wall in my man cave. Mm -hmm. I got to see Willie Nelson. That was a high point of 2018. You did. Yeah. You did. We you got on stage drunk in, in our area. Yes. Yeah. I had before. to cut I had to before we go went on stage. I had to cut you off before you even started talking. I was like, "Okay, you were supposed to do all the emceeing except for one of the other guys was going to do like one other little mm-hmm. thing and then we basically took it and divided it up between three or four people because you were I didn't trust your drunk ass but to go that entire time and not appear drunk there, there were three sets though you got to admit the first two sets I oh did you, awesome. you, you killed it that's before you well first set you were sober second set you were starting to feel a little buzz by that third set you didn't even really need to be on stage and also in consideration there was this is a sold out concert too oh, yeah. now we're talking thousands and thousands of people and jp's drunk ass is is is, is on stage okay. with all of us and i'm like last time going on i'm like all right jp no like Aaron, you're going to say this. Matt, you're going to say this. And uh, we're, no. <laughs> JP was just I, getting... I was suffering from exhaustion. And alcoholism. I, I did drink on empty stomach. They got, in the grand scheme, I didn't drink that much, but I was on empty stomach. But so here's I mean, the difference between JP and most of us. Most yes. of us would drink, which I can't say this because I got a little too intoxicated in New Year's, but I wasn't also in front of thousands of people. But JP, most of us would drink one or two and be like, oh, wow, like... 
Mm. Starting to fill it, you know, no more drinks for me. I'm going to go get something to eat. Whereas JP just skimped on the food and was like, I'm going to go get more to drink. I was caught up in the spirit. There was an electricity in the air that night. Well, and I was caught up in it. To your defense, too. I mean, it's not often that you get to drink backstage with music stars. That's so, right. Oh, know. man. We got to take shots with somebody who could end up being a big mega star. Well, they are pretty much. Yeah. Now. I mean, they yeah. toured with Luke Bryant and all this stuff. I'm tr- I try to be as discreet as possible. Well, I don't think Luke Bryant. <laughs> gonna hear this i mean luke Bryan. he's not toured with luke Bryan. i'm pretty sure he said no luke he Bryan. toured with like brantley gilbert and i don't know and uh luke combs is who you're okay, thinking of luke thinking. combs is like his best friend oh well, okay but i'm trying to be discreet because i don't i don't know that guy might not want that story told on air so i'm no. trying to be i discreet. told it on stage what are you talking about i said that how we were gearing up uh, backstage and there may or may not have been some jaegermeister and this just helps his reputation, you know. Mm, I don't know. You say that, and then the next thing you know, he's trying to do gospel music, and now that story's haunting him. Yeah. Well, look. I mean, he's a he's a redeemed uh, sinner, and all. It but anyways, it's not often you get to drink backstage with uh, not not that willingly. I mean, I've done it before, but it's not often that they're like. You're usually trying to get into the backstage. It's not often that they're like, y'all want to come drink with us? Yeah, super cool guy. But then, you know, great biceps. myself, Matt, other folks were like, yeah, we'll take a shot in a Jaeger bomb and that's it. Whereas JP is just like, yeah, I'll take a shot in a Jaeger bomb and I need a beer. And then how about yeah. another shot? <laughs> Woo! So, yeah. Yeah, I told you, man, if, if we had have had cocaine on site, things would have went a lot smoother. Okay, I love that we're normally such a PG podcast. And then I tell JP we've got one free-for-all, which, I mean... I'm just... Uh, I, I really clean it up, though. Anybody, I think, like, if you hear somebody laugh and we've got uh, somebody in the studio with us that's just hanging out, but I think even he can agree. Like, I, I am so PG on the podcast and on the radio, but I probably have, like, the... Worst mouth off the mic, wouldn't you say? You've worked with me for years. I agree. Yeah, see, I mean, like, when I'm not on the... It's just because I work on radio, so I'm so used to having to be PG. Off mic, I, I'm I'm not the, the nicest <laughs> talking guy, but, I mean, I, still, I'm like, we'll do a free-for-all podcast. JP's like, okay, F this, F that. <laughs> well, they were the, mostly they were direct quotes, so there is that. Mm. But no, JP had him a good old time. So 2018 was a fight. That's what I put on my Facebook, man. I mean, I thought 2018 was a good year. More highs than lows. I think we so. Can, yeah. I think so. And we had a lot of fun. It's going to be even better, baby. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Got some new subscribers. Got mm-hmm. some new uh, new commenters, listeners. Lost a few along the way. It happens. <laughs> but hey, if you don't like it, you better learn to love it. Bam. it's only going up from here, baby. That's right. I love the enthusiasm. Yeah. I'm excited, man. Now, just um, for those of you that want the Conspiracy Podcast, just flood and harass JP in the comment section. Tell him to make it happen. It's basically just been a scheduling conflict. So, But we're, we're going to do it. It might might end up having to be on a weekday, but we'll make it happen. That would be easier, actually. I feel like I'd rather release it on a weekday. Because mm-hmm. JP believes in a lot of really crazy conspiracies that I just really can't. Well, I don't like to call them conspiracies. He, what would you call them? I don't know. Uh, uh, for one thing, I don't believe in anything i simply go he entertains the idea of i go in the direction the information uh, leads me and even if it's in a straight flat line right that's that's right and like you don't go around in a circle you you go straight across well i don't believe in the uh, satanist notion of gravity so no you think gravity relates to satanism well, yeah, I mean, that's why the they put the, the G in the middle of the Masonic symbol. They don't, they don't want you to believe in God anymore. They want you to believe in their fake pseudoscience. Which so what makes this gravity. happen? What makes this happen? I'm throwing a pin up, and it just hit the ground. The, the pin is more dense than the oxygen molecules in the air, so of course it's going <laughs> to yeah, go right down. I mean, At least if you're going to not believe in gravity, at least that somewhat makes sense. Now, like I said, I don't, I don't deal in belief. But, you know... I you got to believe in something. No. I don't even believe in myself. Well, that's just sad. And on that sad note, we're going to wrap this All podcast right. up. Okay. But, JP, believe in yourself. You're capable of doing good things. We'll see. As long as there's no alcohol involved. No, no, man. I need that. No, I, you don't. Half of, <laughs> half of the incredible stories and life experiences in my catalog 
would not have happened without booze. You're so. right. You're right. Especially the, the the tale of how you used to staple things to your yeah. forehead. So I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. You know, I mean, one day your Dean kids Martin, are going to love to share that to their their friends. Would Dean Martin have been Dean Martin without booze? I mean, look. Would you know, Frank I mean, Sinatra have been Frank Sinatra without booze? I mean, just so many, uh, so many. You know, would would the White Album have happened without LSD? I don't know that it would have. Mm, that's true. I just, I think there are certain ways you, we need to uh, augment our brain. For the betterment mm. of stuff. All right. An artistic expression. Yeah. Well, I mean. Another podcast, man. We'll have to get into like stone dape theory and all this kind of stuff. What is? Yes. I don't I've never heard of this. I just. So JP is. is no, JP. OK. Let me say not believes. JP knows about a lot of crazy I investigate uh, theories things. and things. Yeah. And I really would love to hear them. So I'm super. I really am excited to get this conspiracy thing going. I just or truth seekers or whatever the hell we're going to call it. So we're, I we're really come up with a good name. Really want this to go and happen more so more so not even for the listeners as much as I just want to learn this stuff. Mm-hmm. So did you say stoned ape theory? Stoned ape theory. Yes. Apes got stoned. Well, I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, just substances in nature, you know, plants and uh, fungi and stuff with psilocybin DMT, which are, I mean, our per, what, perennial, perennial gland produces DMT. I mean, DMT is in us right now. But no, uh, it, a lot of people theorize and it's it's been met with a lot of conjecture, but uh, that our uh, like early hominids, they, you know, ate these substances and, and tripped. And that's what started to develop uh, abstract thought and led to the development of art and language. And like I said, uh, I don't think there's any mainstream scientists who will subscribe to that theory, but there's a lot of research that's been done into it. And uh, uh, Graham Hancock, he did a book. I can't remember what it was called, but I mean, you know, he, he looks into it and he actually is a 50 year old guy who had never experimented with hallucinogens. And he did it just to research his book. And I mean, it's. <laughs> I, I think we should we should do some of this stuff in podcast while tripping. Mm, It'd be interesting. Maybe once the podcast is maybe if we're making a living off the podcast. In the meantime, I don't need there to be video or audio of me out there tripping balls while I still have a job to maintain. I'll stop it. But you know, maybe down the road if we make a living off of this, maybe. But well, right now I you know. Especially when you when you when you're a manager, you can't really have video and audio out there in the. Well, dude, I used to manage a grocery store, man. I came in one. Okay, one well, evening, let me. Okay, when you like when you, coming when, down off a mushroom when you, trip, man, and like the <laughs> the lines on the floor were still kind of distorted. All right, when you manage when you manage something that's in the public eye, like, and I know grocery stores are, but in the oh, things yeah. such as like a radio station, I kind of just don't want that. Some you know, I might the, need another job at another radio station. One brother, day, so. how many times has Howard Stern got fired? You, you know, you want to get to the top, you got to break some rules. But Howard babe. Stern's also in like a much better area than we are. There's like two radio stations hey, here. Dude, he he traveled around to a lot of podunk radio stations. Mm. But you can't saying. live your life comparing it to Howard Stern. Howard Stern also lived in the day when the radio stars were superstars. We live in a time where the radio star is just slowly withering away. I mean, most stations don't even have personalities these days. So, you know, back then it was an in-demand thing. Right now, hey, what can you do? I talk. That's why we're morphing and I've done acid. into the podcast <laughs> arena. Yeah. Yep. This is really just therapy for us because we don't get to, well, we do talk on the radio though. I mean we don't talk like it's like this, but no, we, no. we talk we gotta keep it like like thirty seconds to a minute, so speak for yourself. Yeah, well I, I mean generally, you know. I, I try to compress mine because, you know mm. I'll start to get in the ums, um, um, so I try to And get Lord it. have mercy. Yeah. What's your other crutch words? I think that's it. You've really cut down on your crutch. Yeah, I've You've gotten better for sure. Gotten a lot better. It used to be, Lord have mercy, and I'll tell you. i tell you. Yeah, I'd go into the Hank Hill. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell, tell you what. what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, you've gotten much, much better. It's 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 like being a proud dad. Yeah. But so, yeah, this has just been random ramblings because we didn't have anything subject-oriented to talk about today. and I, it's, We covered a lot of ground, though. Yeah. Masturbation, mm-hmm. conspiracies, yeah. TV, and the gambit. Um, yeah, your your neighborhood, mm-hmm. the importance of calling the police when there's violence in your area. Uh, so says you. Uh, but so yeah, we'll catch you sometime this week. We'll have um, the mail call podcast on Thursday. So if nothing else, we'll have that. Mm-hmm. We'll try to get in a schedule with things because you, of all people, were the one that had come to me about like last year about making a schedule 
of podcasts to be released. And yeah, I know. We just have not paid any like we, attention we've, to that. We've done a lot better, though, as far as releasing content. You know, like, We've released regularly. more, and now we just need to figure out what we want to release. You're when, right. You're you know right. what I mean? Yeah, really, like, peg it down. Yeah, just to give a schedule. People will. Uh, people tend to like a schedule a little bit better. And then it those does. that don't like these rambling you know, rambling uh, podcasts, they know, hey, I'm not listening on Wednesday because – I don't find them interesting if they're not talking about The Walking Dead or mm-hmm. answering my questions. Yep. But so, yeah. So we'll catch you at the latest on Thursday, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe we'll have some good uh, comics come out and talk about that. Oh, yeah. We do get comics yeah. tomorrow. So we'll see. Well, I'm Justin. And I'm JP. And that guy's Julius. Oh, we love Julius. <laughs> and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>